smtraining.tv, which <laughs> we are now, I guess, a two award winning live stream, which has been very exciting. Uh, thank you for everyone who has made that possible. Uh, it would not have been doable without you guys. Uh, yeah, so RCC won the Education Training and Excellence Award, I believe, for the second time total, which is really cool. And again, super exciting. Uh, thank you, everyone. Seriously, you're a big part of that. These streams would be very boring and nowhere near as fun if, all you all, if everyone didn't show up and come see us and talk to us. And if people didn't go to our YouTube videos, recordings, and leave comments and interact with us and let us know that we're actually trying to help the community. So that's really awesome. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're like, Margaret, you're cool, but where's Richard with all of his fancy updates? Uh, due to shenaniganry, Richard is currently having a lunch with people. I forget who. No, there's a session. There's a, there's a current ongoing uh, engage session. Now I remember. Now I remember. I was like, he has lunch? Where's his session? It's a session that he wanted to go see with a couple of the engineers. So he's off to go do that. So today's conversation is recorded. We recorded it this morning. The discussion about the keynote recap is a conversation that is pre-recorded. Um, despite the fact, please leave comments. Please ask questions. I will be collecting all of your guys' feedback and discussion and forwarding on to Richard and the team, specifically Richard. So if you have like comments like, hey, what's up with this? Or could you say this to them? That way he has it. So please don't feel like just because it's recorded that you don't want to leave any sort of feedback or commentation. Tomorrow we'll be doing more engaged stuff. Do I know what it is? No, I assume that something will occur to Richard as he's wandering around um, engage. I keep wanting to say DevCon and something will happen. So that'll happen. And then uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's all might all be functions. Richard also might decide he wants to do other things to discuss and talk about. So we'll see. For the moment, it is currently functions with Richard. Thank you everyone again for coming. Thank you everyone for the congratulations and thank you seriously for coming to see our streams and interacting and talking with us. I've said that multiple times, but it does mean a lot. I always like seeing my regulars here and I always like seeing the regulars in the comments on YouTube. So thank you. With that being said, ba -ba -ba, we're gonna close this little video, run this. Hi everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another broadcast of fmtrain.tv where we are live or we were almost live from the Claris Engage, which is the developer awesome. conference for 2024. Yep. So I'm here with Garrett Debsky. Garrett and I are here to kind of recap the keynote, right? Yeah, keynote last night. Exciting stuff. I'm glad we're able to talk about it today. Yeah, it's very exciting. So we worked with uh, the executive team at Claris to make sure that we're uh, providing consistent messaging. I think the big piece of this is that there's been uh, clarification of the messaging. It's more clear as to where Claris is going. I think some of the confusing components of the messaging over the last number of years have been resolved. I have a very high degree of confidence in what they are doing, more so than I've been in the last five or six years. There was multiple exciting things in the keynote, but I think that was one of the biggest takeaways was just that the messaging going forward should be uh, clarified. Yeah, and I, and I think the people here were uh, even with, with there were some other meetings, even before the keynote, where some of this was covered with some of the higher and platinum consultancies, uh, the under the hood, the transparency from Claris is really a welcome improvement, and they have learned a tremendous amount, and the team is, I think, on a good track. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through this slideshow. This is a variation or a, a slimmed down version of what was done uh, last night, right? So up front. They were talking about vision and plan, right? So the vision was the part where they were looking out ahead. What is their vision? What does the future look like? And what is the plan? So what were the differences in these? The vision, like you said, is the long-term vision of the product. The plan is, they said, something that is either in action or going to be in action within the next two quarters. I think they said resources have been basically promised to these. Yeah, sectors. so this is the first slide, and you'll see this evolve as we move forward here. And then, of course, the Claris ecosystem is a, is a big conversation about promoting the ecosystem, making the ecosystem successful, because that's what the developers need to hear and see. Are they going to have great products in the future? Are there going to be a demand for their services in the future? All these things came up. So Claris spent some time talking about the grow component, enable component build. Yeah, being able to grow the community, give us the tools that we need and then build the products that we need is essentially what that's for. Yeah, so we are actually here for this event at at Apple, Apple's Austin campus, their new training center, I guess, or executive briefing center. It's a new building here. In fact, they're out the window, they're building new buildings as we speak, right? So obviously Apple's doing well. Um, so Apple is, is a division or department of Claris, right? It's a subsidiary officially, but effectively it's like- Other this, way around. Claris. Other way around, okay, right. <laughs> and then so because of that, we've always wanted Apple to work with 
or clients to work with Apple and vice versa to, to really leverage the relationship that each has, right? And we're starting to see that. So uh, there's a work with Apple, uh, with the school education department, with the division of Apple and yep. sales. And I think they, they brought that up multiple times that they're starting to lean uh, more on Apple's expertise in certain areas of the product. You know, we, we might get into some of that later, but trying to uh, leverage stuff that's already in existence from the parent company. Exactly. So that's kind of this idea here. So uh, Claris is learning a lot from this. Uh, clearly, Apple's is a highly successful, just looking at the building, you can tell they're a highly successful organization, right? Mm -hmm. And so Claris has a, a, obviously has expertise, but they can learn a lot from uh, the execs, uh, the teams and the salespeople at Apple. So you're starting to see that. Claris is going to be working. They come back and they talk to us all the time about how they're just an ecosystem, they're the purveyor of the ecosystem, but really depends upon the developers to make it all work. Yeah, and I think that's from a few years ago. That's one of the new messages that uh, us as consultants, especially, really uh, rings with us because FileMaker is the tool. We're the ones that go out in the community and, and put it to use for customers. And I think saying that on stage last night several times was great. And it's been in the messaging over the last, say, six, 12 months. They've kind of always talked about this, but really they're putting their actions to words per se, right? If, if that makes sense. And so we we see it being more than just a talking point. It's It looks like uh, actionable items, which is really exciting. One of the big things they talked about, once again, this is kind of a subset of this, is the idea of removing friction. Right. So where is friction in the platform? Where is friction in the ecosystem? Anywhere where there's a sharp edge, they want to address that. And they want to give us tools as developers to not have to say no. Yeah. Right. Not having to say no is a big part of that. Saying no to a customer excessively results in that not being a customer anymore, which, of course, leads us to this idea right here. But as Claris is getting feedback, they are working that feedback in. So when we complain about friction, then they can address that. Right. And, and this goes, uh, we're going to show on the next slide, but this goes into how they see the communication uh, going forward and making that messaging public because uh, up until now, it's not been a public conversation. Yeah, this was a lot to absorb last night. It was, they, they flew through this pretty fast. But what we're seeing here, there's two screens here nearly identical. This is the marketing plan. The other one is the products plan. And there's three vertical slices here. There's the, there's the stuff that's coming in the future. They call that prioritized backlog. There's things that are in progress, and then there's things that are completed and done. So yeah. what does prioritized backlog mean? Is that like five years away? What is that? No, according to last night, that's within the next uh, two quarters is what they were saying. So okay. within two quarters, resources have already been assigned to address these. So And then in progress is actively uh, yeah. in development right now. And Claris is working very rapidly on this uh uh, the Navy term is like a snapshot, but the, the idea is that it's there. It's it's very rapidly coding and building and turning things loose into the community, into the ecosystem. So it's not months and years. It's literally two to three weeks. Things change rapidly, uh, especially if you have a bug fix or a new feature and a and a new product. Right, you can see those pretty rapidly. Yep. So we're not going to drill through all of these. If you want to watch this a little bit or come back and pause this, you can. But you'll see that this is the marketing side. And of course, people are like, oh, that's interesting, Richard. But see, I deal with marketing a lot because we're doing the videos, right? And the training and stuff. So the part of that's marketing. The next slide is much more interesting, which is their product plan. So once again, the same strategy, transparency, where they're saying that these are the prioritized backlog items, the in-progress items, the done items. And what I'll point out is the things on the right are things that we've talked about on the live stream before, Specifically with Jacob Taylor, who's sitting over here next to me. He's bobbing his head up and down. Layout on screen, uh, layout calculation objects, LCOs, the flush option with the script step. We were talking about that. The tunneling in port 443, which allows us to kind of, like the hotel, we've established the hotel that we're staying at is filtering and slowing traffic on port 5003. So they're slowing FileMaker traffic because A, they don't know what FileMaker is, and B, they want to prioritize like phone calls and Zoom calls and Slack and things like that, uh, they can, uh, if you could tunnel S443, you could actually make sure that FileMaker received the priority to the network that it needed. It was interesting. So there's all sorts of practical applications here. Yep. I want to call out prioritized backlog is not only do we have uh, the premium version of FileMaker coming at some point, right? Yep. Uh, that's here. Um, we also have additional security compliance with FIPS add on some other things, SAML support. Whenever I see SAML, I remember thinking Chris Moyer because he presented on SAML, backup pause in air in Portland. Yeah, and I, th I think it's just looking at this list, it's not just pro. We were talking about server. We're talking about 
Yes, the product. This is all the products. So the server, it's your clients, it's Go, and and some of these things over here. They're like when you see the word custom view, view. I keep wrestling with Claris on this. That's the word for layout, right? We're going to talk about this a little more, but that's a layout in their new system, right? right. And they they changed the name once again. I some of the people here like why change the name because it confuses us. Anyway, so moving forward here, uh, we're talking to Rick Kalman quite a bit, and Rick was. Uh, been actively beat on his desk, beating away at the keyboard, documenting this. So when you see this information as prioritized backlog right here, they're posting this to their website, to the FileMaker community, right? Yeah. And and this next screenshot, this is how they're going to communicate this. So it's going to be a, a post on the website. Um, that's that's public facing. Yeah, public facing. So yeah, you can log on, you can see what they're doing. So more transparency, more agile maneuverability. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh and less triple secret stuff so moving moving the conversation forward so the, the platform has got this view right now where we have the filemaker pro side or the filemaker which is all the products that has been around historically that's really the site on the left over here this internal facing solution component and that's where filemaker really can be deploy people to play frequently for 50 people 100 people 200 people yeah. as high as we've had as 500 people 500, yeah. but if you want like high volume and public facing components to it it's you have to do it through a php you know javascript some sort of web coding right and they want to make that easier correct and that's where uh, this section two external comes in and that's mostly talking about the uh the new studio claire studio claire yeah studio, right. and so we i've been working with claire's on that we're going to see that momentarily but just understand that they really have a very specific conversation about on-prem the on-premise server, the FileMaker server, the pros, the goes, the web directs that connect to that. That's their bread and butter. That's what been we've made money. And millions of people are affected by this every day in a positive way. Apple uses FileMaker everywhere, right? And you know that better than most people, right? Um, and so Apple internally uses their own products to make and manage iPhones and sales and product manufacturing. Apple uses the FileMaker platform, which is, or the Claris FileMaker platform. Which is interesting. So that's kind of this diagram. So we see that external facing solutions that we're, we're going to have with the uh, the studio side, which is this web friendly front end kind of drag and drop, but it still has some pretty deep hooks with code. We're going to talk about that momentarily. So this is this part of it, right? So if I could draw this slide on top of the previous slide, the the Claris FileMaker side is your on prem, your inside the office uh, right. setup. You can obviously access it around the cloud, right? So that's not an issue. But the Claris Connect is your your API connectivity and Claire Studio. Connect and Studio are both fairly new. In fact, Correct. Studio is is I'm working with them on just getting you know basics flushed out, getting it really usable for project management. We'll see that momentarily. And Connect has been around a little bit longer, but it's still got a lot of, a lot of growing to do, right? Yeah, it still still needs to be fully embraced, I think, by by the filemaker community. And part of that you, you can see with this slide, um, they're looking at removing the limits on on those and i think that'll really yeah that'll come up here so one of the things this is peter nelson the vice president of engineering really great guy um he hammers away on these north stars the north stars are basically we have an installed base of customers we love our customers we don't want to cause our customers problems you know we have bugs and issues with you know technology in general so we don't want to deliberately cause any issues right yeah yeah so no friction uh, we're going to honor the developers' investments in our technology. We're not going to break what they're doing. The one thing they want to add to that, of course, is this idea of identity everywhere. So that's the uh, Claris, uh, Claris sign on. What it Claris? I just based on that. Hey, Jacob Taylor, what do we call that? Claris ID. Thank you, Claris ID. I just based on that. Right, long day we're at the conference here. <laughs> so Claris ID is what they're trying to use uh, everywhere. So you can sign on once, and it would work on Pro, on Go on studio yeah. on connect you do it once it authenticates two-factor authentication very exciting uh, data everywhere is the idea that you have the data in filemaker but it can be shared with studio and studio has data that shares with with filemaker and then of course through connect to slack and dropbox and all these everywhere other. else you want to use it yeah and then they're talking about building new technology but not being constrained by the old i think that's kind of a that's a, a little bit of a a tough a tough one to do right we have right. new tech but we don't want to break what people have already built. So so if you're building a brand new platform and you didn't have to worry about 
millions and millions and millions of customers using the FileMaker platform, you could just do stuff. But when they build a new feature, they have to be thoughtful that they don't retroactively break a solution. Right. Yep. yep. It's got to work with what we have. This covers a little bit about the existing uh, FileMaker uh, plan and what they've been doing um, briefly. But the idea is that they uh, want to support more single sign-on or with the Claris ID, higher levels of encryption, patches. The FileMaker server application, Jacob's going to bob his head up and down, is more reliable, more stable, and faster. And he's not disagreeing. He's bobbing his head up and down quite a bit here. So um, it's been getting much, much better. And, of course, people talk about, well, I'm on FileMaker 17. It's only a year or two old. And <laughs> and, and why should I update? And, and what people realize is that there's been a lot of releases in there. We're going to cover that towards the end. Yeah. But uh, you need to be on FileMaker 20 um, and stay up to date. And that also encourages you or gets you security patches and fixes because se security things can and will happen out there. And if you want the benefits of being protected, you need to stay up to date. So if you want to look at this, for some of you who want to come back and look at this, that's a pretty good slide. So let's talk about Studio. So so about every three weeks, Claris is releasing a new version of Studio. Studio is this idea where you have this drag and drop web GUI application. It is auto, it's responsive, which means that it works great on phone. It great work on iPad. It works great on your 32 inch display. It has all sorts of, they call them views, but they're really a layout, right? right. So they have a spreadsheet layout, a spreadsheet form, a list, Detail, the can Kanban, right? I always say it wrong. Gallery, timeline. These are all really neat. And so the idea is to create apps and have lots of great scalability. The Mongo is the back end. It's the same kind of eventually consistent database. We could talk about that in other live streams. But yeah. uh, from our perspective, it's really, really slick. And it synchronizes with your FileMaker database running on FileMaker. And server. the thing about these points is this is stuff scaling and stuff that you don't have to worry about when you set these up it it just handles it for you it handles automatically yeah so this is an active development i think this will change quite a, a bit over the next say 24 months but we're involved with it right now which kind of brings up this one solution so uh over the last two or three months i got sucked into working with claris engineering directly and they were talking about this last night and that was this whole idea uh, that we had a customer project and we had this one customer called Big Valley Aviation. We wanted to build the application. And as the customer saw bugs, they could report them into this. As we resolve bugs, they could see that they resolved and please, please test it. And so Clarence was showing this to people. Uh, Haley Batista was talking about this. And she said, if the customer could have a portal to see what their project status was, that would be really amazing. Because then I could have weekends off, is what she said. She didn't have to work 24-7, 365, which I... <laughs> Because I like staff retention, I like happy customers. I think that she's over here laughing at me. So we have we have a little bit of an audience here with that. So the short version is that they walked people through what Studio looks like with this solution, and it's all work in progress. But the idea is that you uh, can see this as they're playing it, and you select the project. You can see that we're going to update a status. We have uh, this is actually the users using the FileMaker system, so they're we're using Studio to manage and communicate with the customers easily about what we're building in the FileMaker platform. Nice. So, or the Claris FileMaker platform. So then you want to move the status, it's in progress or it's done, you can drag and drop and move it around. So it's very gooey. In fact, one of the things we were doing is I said, this screen's a little rigid. We make this more gooey-ish. And they're like, oh yeah, we're working on that. So every three weeks, there's a new build of, of Studio. Yeah. Right. And and things are getting fixed and improved all the time. So it's very exciting. And and that, just for clarification, this is that new custom view that they're the con they're, view right here. Well, this is the custom view, right? Because custom different, view, yeah. Different sections on the layout. The way Claris first built this, it was just views, and then they had different views. Then they realized, well, everyone wants to treat this like it's a filemaker layout, which makes it a super flexible kind of view. So then they call it a custom view. Yeah. And I think when it's all said and done, it'll just be a view that does it's super flexible right, right. that makes sense right. I, I think a lot of this is me me working with them and then i train people talk to people and then they go oh this doesn't make any sense so i go back to claire and say hey you know and engineering this might sound great inside the building but when i talk to people they're like not getting it right mm -hmm. so they get that feedback and then they work that into their plans all right so ai is a big piece of this and so we, there's not a lot of detail and conversation here about what's coming in the future release of FileMaker, but clearly they are releasing a major update of the Claris FileMaker platform about every three or four months. And so they tend to name them by year. 
And so we see a, saw a reference previously on one of the screens where they said they called it file, uh, the Claris FileMaker 2024 platform. Um, and so that's coming, and there's going to be a lot of AI in that. So you want to give people a snapshot of a little bit what this is about, potentially, Garrett? Yeah, it's definitely been kind of the buzz of the week here is the talking about AI. And I think, once again, the messaging from Claris has been that they want to give us as developers the tools to use AI. Um, so whether that's doing, um, you know, natural language searching within FileMaker or um, as developers being able to, we saw a session this morning where being able to actually build uh, calculations and and stuff like that using AI. Um, it's it's really pretty cool stuff. It's, it's pretty neat. The demo, what, what would they call it? They called it uh, semantic. Semantic uh, search. Semantic search. So the idea was that you take FileMaker, and it's it's even more embedded and ingrained in the next version of FileMaker, which is coming soon. Um, but it's the idea is that you can tell it that here's this kind of AI, you know, like almost like I don't call it a chat bot, whatever, but this is AI, and you tell it to go look in this FileMaker table to learn. And let me drag and drop some documents in here into containers. Here's a PDF, here's a Word file, right. and read these text fields, and it learns from that. Yep. And then you can ask it questions. And it's doesn't you don't have to ask the exact question. Like I say, what does it take to be a expert FileMaker developer? But I don't use the word expert in there. What if I said, hey, what does it take for David to become a master FileMaker developer or to be an advanced FileMaker developer or a, a coder that uses FileMaker in the background? I said the same thing kind of backwards. The AI can see through that and give you answers, the same answer, because it's smart enough to see those similarities, a semantic search. Mm -hmm. And it can also, based on different patterns that you can teach it, it can learn how to give specific results in a specific format. So it's, it's. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. So the, 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 the top slides that we kind of, we you know work with Claris on the slides a little bit, figure out what we want to show, but you know, how does AI make it make your life better? How does the AI life make your user's life better? Uh, what kind of experiences do they want to have? What kind of insights you want to have? What informed decisions? They had another one where the users were creating their own charts, right? Which is great because I hate doing charts because as soon as you do a chart, the customer goes, well, wouldn't it be great if it was a bubble chart and it cross-referenced the Wombat widget weasel, right, on page five with this rare? Well, you could tell it to, to integrate Wombat widget weasel. I can't say that five times real fast into the chart automatically do that yeah. for me and it does it you don't have to torture the developer because the de you don't you know you you don't want to pay the developer to build the charts for you the developer doesn't want to build the charts for you right generally right. developers we could think of other things to do than do that so that was a great demo that was a great demo i i can't wait to get my hands on that and see how that how they're doing that so one of the things that's come up is people always asking me like hey which version of filemaker do i buy and that's because claris was maybe imprecise in their messaging um I, I, being charitable i think a little bit they basically kind of confused a lot of people so now we have one single message that makes a lot of sense it's easy for me to articulate it and that's we have a unified claris platform for those of you who saw that there was a filemaker pro and a claris pro those all came together they're continuing to execute on this simplification which is great and so once you have the, the simplification of the platform, but you also have what about licensing, right? Which I think is where we're going here. Yeah, so the question came up. I've been getting more emails lately. Some of you asked about, oh, I don't understand the licensing and that, 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 that. So Claire's is working on licensing clarification or simplification. Yeah, I, I don't know if they've fully messaged how that's all going to work, but we got a little bit of a view of that um, with... Uh, some extra, they're removing the limits, as you can see here on the, on the right-hand side. And they're also adding the uh, automatic access to connect. We already had kind of that, but they're on Connect and Studio both. So Correct. if you buy the FileMaker license for a five-pack, I always call it a pack. So they don't call it packs. It's five seats or 10 seats. It's a, it's like a six-pack of beer or something, right? Like, psh, right? Have a cold drink. Um, you buy that, you get Studio, and you get Connect automatically. Do you have to use them? No, but they're there. And as they get better, you should start to look at them and play with them. I think Studio and Connect, both. this will be big years of growth with both those newer parts of the platform. Yeah, and I think it's going to make it easier uh, on us developers to use these 
tools for customers because there's nothing extra that they need to buy. Um, and it also makes a conversation about, as we talked about before, upgrading different versions. It's it's becoming more of just, you just need to have the latest. because Yeah, so I've been talking to Clarissa about kind of them fleshing this out. So over the next couple of weeks, for those of you watching this video fairly when we after we've shot it, there's going to be a blog post and probably another live stream on licensing where they're going to clarify it quite a bit. But I think their website is one of the problems is that the first thing the website tries to do is sell them the cloud SaaS server version of this thing. And people don't know if they need that, et cetera. And most of the, a lot of developers don't use it. They use the on-premise product. Um, in fact, the vast majority do. So they're trying to, clar I think, clarify the licensing, but then their website's going to have to follow suit and and reinforce that simplification. So that's very welcome. Oh, so we're heading towards the end here, right? So yep. uh, Clarice is talking about million plus users, daily users on the pro uh, the platform, 1,400 partners. We're just one, right? And they've had 100 profitable quarters since the beginning, beginning. Before Steve Jobs came back and saved Apple, which is a long time ago, Clarice was making money, right? Yeah. And it was Clarice back then. Then they kind of changed their name. But the FileMaker name, the Clarice name is, is that company. They have got one great platform, a great ecosystem, and they're part of Apple corporate, which gives them a lot of interesting uh, capabilities, right? Yeah. Oh, this is the last one. So I wanted to bring this up too. So people say, oh, I'm using FileMaker 18, and it's only because it's FileMaker, the year is what, what's, what's the year right now? 20, 20, we're in 2024 now. I keep, I keep signing my checks the wrong way when I write a check very rarely. But yeah, they're like, well, it's only three or four years old. Well, the problem is that all these have been major releases in here across the top in the green. And so there's been from FileMaker 18 and 19, 19, 1, 19, 2, there's a lot of releases in here. We're currently at FileMaker 20.3. The marketing team calls it FileMaker 23. So the next version of FileMaker will be theoretically FileMaker of the year 2024, right? Whenever it comes out this year, probably. Or 20.4. Or, or what, 20? 20.4. 20.4. Actually, I think it's supposed to be 21. See, that's okay. that confusion. So you just had yep. the confusion. You're supposed to be an expert. So, yeah, <laughs> they're talking about it being called the version. The technical version number will be 21, but the year will be 24. So there's always room for improvement in the messaging a little bit, but uh, that's kind of where this goes. So any questions that we have about this? Does Margaret have any questions for us at this point? Uh, no, we're good. No questions from the crew. David questions, Jacob Taylor questions. No one has questions. All right. Well, that's it from uh, the uh, FileMaker Claris. I keep calling it. It's going to be it's going to be years before I can undo that. I was going to say FileMaker same. Developer Conference. But same at Dev, yeah, DevCon. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not, now it's, not, it's, the, it's in Claris Engage, right? 2024. Yep. Keynote kind of summary, but good stuff. Really encouraged by what's going on with Claris. Really, really in terms of the vision, the execution, and and not like totally wondering what they're doing, right? And it, and having fundamental concerns about what's happening. It was it was promising. I think everyone in the room felt they weren't just talking points. They weren't just messaging. That the uh, the admin team really believed in what they were saying. And I think we've seen over, from the last year that it, it it's gonna be. It's yeah, going to be uh, the, point of the confusion have been clarified, yeah. simplified, the messaging being simplified. That's one of the things that I do is I have to carry the messaging. And if it doesn't make sense and everyone immediately lets me know that I make no sense. Yeah. And so then I report that back to Claris. But yeah, that's, it's a good one. And Jacob Taylor greatly improved. You're happy. Bobby said up and down servers, much better, more stable, more boring. Technically you want it boring, right? Reliable with high levels of safety and security. Uh, what Peter Nelson called it hardening. We're going to harden our server. Uh, it's an interesting term because that's like a, it's what you do when you're going to get hit by a nuke, you harden your, your, your electronics. Uh, no, it's a military term, right? So I'm not sure how we got into that using that, but yeah, you're hardened against the nuclear blast. So FileMaker coming soon, hardened against the MPs, right? Yeah. So anyway, very exciting, very exciting. So with that, we will catch everyone on another day. Thanks, Margaret.
I've got a report of an individual up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 